Hi folks, and welcome back to Meaningful Money. I'm inside again, but not forced inside by the weather this time, but by this knee on which I've had uh, some keyhole surgery. So I've got it up here on a couple of pillows, just uh, resting it for a few days. So uh, soon be back on my feet and hopefully finally back outside filming these again. Doesn't feel like I've been outside for months. Back in episode 256, we introduced the two main types of life assurance, term assurance and whole of life assurance. So I just want to put a bit more flesh on the bones of those, a bit more detail in this one particularly on how term assurance works. Before we get into that though, as ever, I must thank my friends down here in the bottom right, that's Seven Investment Management, who continue to sponsor me and support me here on Meaningful Money, and I'm very, very grateful. Now, before I go into a little bit more detail on how term assurance works, it's just important to remind ourselves how important it is, particularly if you have a family, to insure yourselves. And I was sort of prompted to do this really by somebody who I don't know him well, uh, but many of my friends know him very well. This is a, a guy who was very involved with the church that I used to be a part of up in Cardiff when I lived there. And he sort of came on the scene just before we moved away. So I know of this guy, I've met him, but don't know him well, but again, many of my friends do. Well, uh, this chap was 32 years old and was working out in the gym and just had a huge bleed in his brain. Uh, he was kept alive for about a week, but eventually died. Now, he was 32 years old, four young children. Now, life assurance doesn't even begin to cover the needs of that family right now, of course, all the emotional needs. Um, but it would, you know, ease the burden financially for them. I've no idea whether he had life assurance or not, really. It's the last thing uh, from my mind and from the mind of those that uh, love that family very much. But easing that financial burden would be so important for them and for any family. So even though we don't think it'll ever happen to us, just bear that in mind. Now, there are four broad types of term assurance, but two really important ones. So the first one is level term assurance. Now remember, term assurance has a fixed term, so let's just call it 20 years for the purpose of these. Um, and the level term assurance, the word level refers to the level of cover you choose. So let's say that's 200,000 pounds. So you take out a 200,000 pound level term assurance policy. All that means is that at whatever point on the 20 year term you die, <laughs> then 200,000 pound will be paid out. Again, if you survive at more than 20 years, nothing will be paid out. But if you die at any point along the 20 year timeline, 200,000 pound will be paid out because the amount of payout called the sum assured is level, hence the name, level term assurance. Now one alternative is decreasing term assurance. So what happens there is the level of cover starts at whatever you've set it at, but it decreases over time. Now it doesn't decrease in a straight line, it doesn't go down every single year by the same amount. What happens is, is that it uh, starts not going down very much in the early years, and then tails off and reduces quite dramatically towards the end. Now the purpose of this is to cover a debt of some kind, like a mortgage, where in the early years you're paying mostly interest and not reducing the debt very much. Uh, it's only towards the end of a debt like that where you really are hammering away at the capital and reducing it quickly. So decreasing term assurance goes down a little bit every year and is designed to pay off a debt of some kind should you die within the term. Two other broad types. One is convertible term assurance where at the end of the term you get the option to convert that policy into something like an endowment or a whole of life policy. That's generally a very bad idea so I'm not going to waste any time, uh, any more time on that. And the fourth kind is renewable term assurance which gives you the option to renew the policy at the end of the term for another one without any medical underwriting. Now that sounds quite good because you're going to be 20 years older at the end of the first term policy. You know, there may be some medical issues which might make life assurance expensive and so that might sound like a good idea. But because the life assurance company has taken all the risk there by guaranteeing to insure you at the end of the term, renewable term assurances are quite expensive. I've never done one in 15 years of it being in the financial advice industry. So those are your four main types. Level term assurance is the best by far, I think, because the amount of cover stays the same for the whole term. 
but if you're covering a debt specifically, then decreasing term assurance, which goes down a little bit over time, is a great idea too. Next time we're going to talk about whole of life and just give you the alternative, if you like, uh, which will hopefully reinforce why I think level term assurance is the best way to go. So thanks for watching this one and I'll see you next time.